How's it going guys? It's your boy Luke here from Dungeoneers and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to grind on the best female grinding class in the game, the Succession Lawn. Now what we're going to do guys in order is we're going to go over our add-ons first. I actually believe I should go over the add-ons first because there's actually some important stuff in there and it'll make more sense why we took them when we get into the ability portion. Then we're going to head on over to some training dummies. I'm going to show you what your DPS rotation is, your pre-buff combo, and your debuff combo so you can get the maximum grind speed out. I'm going to show you which abilities are priority and which ones you can kind of avoid. You really, since you're playing a succession class, at some point should just max out your entire skill tree. But I'm going to show you guys which ones you can actually focus on so that you can make sure you're grinding as quick as possible. And then at the end, I'm going to give you a full breakdown of how to actually grind some really, really good grind spots and ones you might be able to avoid. However, like I said, guys, she is one of the best grinding classes in the entire game. Some people even put her right up near the top, really close to Succession Striker. Obviously, Suck Striker is kind of broken and nothing's really going to compare to it, but she is pretty darn close. So let's get right on into the video. Guys, with my busy work schedule, I tend to do a lot of my grinding late at night. And because other people in my family actually enjoy sleeping, I end up having to play with the lights off. However, being in the pitch black with a bright screen is really hard on my eyes, and that's why I was so excited when BenQ reached out to me and asked me to try their new monitor mounted light bar. When I first heard about the product, I was very interested right off the bat. Due to buying way too big of a screen for my desk, I don't actually have room for a lamp. So so having a light that clips right on top of the monitor was extremely useful. It has four touch buttons featuring a simple on off, temperature adjustment, brightness and an auto adjust setting that detects your current environment and adjusts the light to your needs. I'm also very happy to note that while I was initially worried that it wouldn't work on my screen since my monitor is curved, I'm happy to say that it does work perfectly. The build quality seems really nice as well, features some really really nice brushed aluminum casings and a very very solid counterweight for the back allowing it to clip onto virtually any monitor. I've been using the screen bar for about a week now and in my own truthful opinion, I genuinely love it. And I would recommend anybody who's looking for a space saving light for your desk that really helps with reducing eye strain or just adding that nice cozy feel, give the BenQ monitor light a shot. Links are down in the description below and thank you again to BenQ for sending me the product. Now onto the video. All right, guys, so first thing we are going to do is go through the skill add-ons. We're going to talk to our skill instructor here, and I'm going to run through what I'm doing. Now, skill add-ons, for the most part, are actually pretty darn, you know, preference-based. Well, these are the ones I really, really like to use. Again, guys, if you're looking for PvP add-ons, this is probably not the place to go. I'm really not up to date on my PvP on Succession Lawn, so there's probably some better videos out there for you to watch. But this is what I am running for my Succession. First off, Salpuri Purge. It already has a minus 15 debuff on it. So putting another 20 on it, it does stack. And this gives you a massive minus 35 DP debuff. I'm also throwing on crit damage on top of it because it'll lower their DP. And then this is usually what I use to engage a combo. And then I start doing the DPS rotation, which is pretty much 99% crit the entire time. So you basically just do 5% more damage. Plus, I'm not really sure on the math but whatever minus 35 DP would give you on the mobs. Next up, Blade Dance. This is one of your most important damage abilities. It is the first ability you usually use in your DPS rotation. So I, of course, put the extra damage to monsters on it and attack and casting speed. Now you can swap the critical hit damage out on Salpuri Purge for extra damage versus monsters plus 30 if you wanted to do it that way, plus the DP debuff. This is totally fine as well. I have no issues with this. Um, this might actually even be better if you're maybe a little lower AP for the grind spot than you want it to be. Um, so you could do that as well. And then of course on this one, you would just take off the extra monster damage and put on your attack speed and your crit damage buff. It's going to give you a little bit less crit. It's only going to give you 3% rather than 5%, but you're getting an extra 10 AP versus monsters. So you could definitely run this as well. Now, Blooming Nether Flower is probably the best ability you have. Like, straight up, that and Symbidium are, like, your best abilities. Um, and Blooming Nether Flower does a ton of hits. 190%, uh, which isn't a lot of damage. Um, it actually does way more when you're in Prime. Uh, but Blooming Nether Flower, it hits 12 times. It does a ton of damage. 
um, and it is your main way of getting your health back. Unfortunately, while Succession Lawn does way more damage than Awakening Lawn, it doesn't have as much sustain. So you really want to have 10 HP per hit on either Symbidium or Blade Dance. I really prefer it on Blooming Nether Flower because when you're using this ability, you can actually move through monsters. Um, so you basically, if you're trying to like get out of a pack, you can start using this, start getting your health back as you're like moving out of the pack. Like you basically, you just no clip through them. Um, and then I have down attack damage plus 3%. Uh, this ability has down attack on it and so does the next one in the DPS rotation. Um, so I put down attack damage on it so that you can really deal damage. Uh, but of course you can swap out down attack for something else if you like. But seeing as how I pretty much just use succession for grinding Aukman and Star's End, uh, both of which you can knock the monsters down, the down attack damage is super nice. Uh, last but not least, of course, we have Symbidium. This is your final massive DPS ability. So I threw on critical hit damage and critical hit rate on it um, because you actually cycle three abilities over and over again. You don't have to wait for cooldowns. These will basically all be up uh, all the time for the most part. So uh, might as well get some extra critical hit damage in on that bad boy just so it does more. Symbidium does crazy damage as well. Uh, for the last two, they're completely preference. Um, I threw on Fragrant Stigmata. This is the ability that you'll use to draw out of the air while you're flying um, so I put some extra damage versus mobs and some extra critical hit rate on it I don't really know like I said it's all preference this is kind of super nice so that you can like fly into the mobs drop down and you already have a couple pre buffs going um, so that's my one I choose and then pendulum kick uh, I actually use this for grabbing mobs and leashing them is leashing the right word aggroing them I use this to aggro mobs um, so whatever ability is your long-range ability that you use for kind of gathering mobs um, I always try and put a bleeding damage add-on on it because there is a certain amount of mobs you can pull at one time. It is limited, but there is not an amount of mobs that you are limited to adding debuff effects on. So when you throw this 100 bleeding damage on like 20 mobs, but you're only damaging 8, as soon as one of those 8 die, it automatically aggroes the next mob in the pack. That's how you can really start upping your pulls and getting as many as possible. And because Pendulum Kick has a really long range on it, you actually hit mobs from a distance pretty good with it. Um, I put some defense on that because that way I get the defense right before I get all the mobs on me. And of course I get the bleeding damage, which again, really, really just helps pull. Um, as you can actually see when you're using that ability, the range is actually pretty insane. It doesn't really show it off very well over there, but I can promise you it is pretty darn long. Uh, so we're going to go over into the battle arena and I'm going to show you guys some absolutely wonderful PvE rotations. Honestly, guys, this class is super easy to play, uh, but if you just don't know really what you're up to, I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's head on over to the target dummies. All right, guys, so here we are over at the target dummies. I'm going to show you guys your priority abilities, your pre-buff combo, your DPS rotation, and your debuff combo. Uh, so we're going to open up our skill menu here. Uh, moon Dance. This is your basic attack. I don't bother getting Moon Slash. I very rarely ever, ever basic attack on this class. I don't really see the need in getting the absolute. It's basically a waste of 15 points. You're probably not going to ever use your basic attack on this class. Uh, and Moon Slash, like I said, I use it so infrequently that I don't even know what it does. So I don't bother with either of these. Uh, Pendulum Cleaver. This is your A and D left mouse button. This is a very simple uh, spinny spinny move, as you would expect. It does pretty okay damage. It's not anything to write home about. However, what is worth writing home about is while you're using it, you get this juicy 15% attack speed buff which carries on for a solid 15 seconds, which is basically your whole rotation. And this is actually what I use to gather mobs. As you can see on that guy over there, it does hit from a pretty good distance away. So usually what I'll do is I'll use my, uh, my pendulum kick to gather the mobs up. And then I'll sort of just use this ability while I'm waiting for them to all group up before I go into the DPS rotation. So that way we start off with the 15% attack speed buff. So reopening it. Blade Dance, this is your first major. Ma oh yeah, max that out. <laughs> Max that out when you can. Uh, Blade Dance. This is your pretty much number one, two, or three, depending on how you look at it. Most important ability. This is one of your three main DPS abilities. Um, it's a plain RMB, and you want to get the Prime Upgrade. It's only one level in it uh, that basically makes it so you do a gazillion damage. Uh, as you can see, it does 1273 times 3, 1273 times 6, and 1273 times 7. Uh, it has a ton of accuracy, critical hit rate, hits 10 targets, super armor stiffness, pull, spin. Guys, this ability is ridiculous. 
So I'm going to show you this crazy in-depth combo. All right, are you ready? That was our right mouse button. That's all you do. You just hold down RMB. It has no cooldown. You can literally use it. Well, it has a two second cooldown, but you can realistically use it every three seconds. That's all it is, guys. It does ridiculous damage. It's giving you attack speed and it's giving you crit damage, as you can see from our attack and crit buffs that we put on in our skill add-ons. So when you pair that with the 15% from your A and D. Okay, that was kind of weird. He kind of glitched out. We'll do it on this guy instead. That is a ton of damage, boys. So max out Blade Dance as soon as possible. Realistically, I would just max this out as the first ability you do. Everything else, to me, takes less priority under it. Uh, on top of that, you are going to want to throw on Dismemberment. This is a very important part of your pre-buff combo. Uh, all it is is A and D and left mouse, or right mouse button. It's this here. It looks very basic, but the most important part is it gives you 8 AP for 8 seconds. Or 10 seconds, I'm sorry. So realistically, you can actually pair these two together. So you can do that one into that, and all of a sudden you now have 15% attack speed and 8 AP for simply holding left or right and then pressing LMB, RMB. Boom. Look at that. Now you have your full buff combo. That's your pre-buff, boys. I'm not kidding. <laughs> That's literally your pre-buff. A and D left mouse button, A and D right mouse button. There's your whole pre-buff combo. Incredible class. Next up, Furious Chase. Uh, this is a pretty good ability. This is your forward RMB. It's pretty good. It does knock them down. Um, I don't really necessarily recommend you get the prime right off the bat. It is pretty good, but you do want to get this to level three because it is an important part of one of our rebombs later. Uh, same with Eye of the Phoenix. Eye of the Phoenix is like a weird, like, I don't, that's what it is there. It's where you just go slash slash. Um, again, not an incredible skill. Doesn't do a ton of damage or anything. But again, it is a very important part of your combo uh, because it does one of your rebams. Next up, Salpuri Purge. This is your tier three add-on skill and a massive debuff, okay? The damage, pretty insane. 1386% times six, hits 10 targets, it spins and floats on hits. Now, because of our add-ons, we do minus 35 DP and plus 30 AP versus monsters. Okay, so this skill, you can use it from your hotbar or you can press shift Q as well. As you can see, it does a ton of damage. And if you look up here, you can see at the top there that he got both the DP debuffs on him. Uh, the cooldown is a little long at, how long is it? I think it's 15 seconds, 16 seconds. So you're not going to use this every pack um, unless you're, you know, sort of right on target. Like where I am at 261, I can pretty much use this on every star's end pack because it takes me a little bit longer to kill them and I'm going to gather up mobs. Uh, and I usually do Andy into the uh, that into that super simple hold left and right mouse button and then you just go left mouse button right mouse button and then shift q or use the hot bar and that's going to give you the a massive debuff on them salbury purge super important make sure you get the prime next up symbidium this is another one of your massive massive dps abilities 11 22 times 4 11 22 times 4 11 22 times 6 11 22 times 7 okay that's a lot of damage Okay, 50% critical hit rate, 15% accuracy. It's a bound on the initial first hit. Forward guard while throwing or pulling the symbiom, and then super armor while you dash towards them, and it does down attack damage. This ability is ridiculous. All right, this is all you want to do. Hold backwards and F. That's the skill. I'm not even kidding. That's the whole one. So we, realistically, we have two abilities that last this long. Right mouse button, backwards F. Look how many hits that was for two abilities. This is what I'm talking about, guys. This class is crazy easy and does insane damage. Now, Coax is super good. It, you can use it during Symbidium. I don't know if it actually procs during the Prime. If it does, I don't care. I use the entire ability. I don't even bother unlocking this. It gets, it gets activated automatically. Um, all of these, I mean, these will come in handy a little bit down the line, but I really try to avoid using them because the full Prime Symbidium, the last hit of it where you dash forwards and slash, that does the most damage of the entire thing, so I always make sure I play the whole animation, so I very rarely ever cancel it with any of these. Berated Ghost, Shift LMB, this ability sucks, don't bother leveling it up, I absolutely hate it and it doesn't have a prime version, so uh, don't bother doing that. Spring Breeze, this is a mobility ability. Um, you can level this up a whole bunch and you can even get it to prime, and it basically, while you're running, it allows you to dash forwards and slash around. It's a pretty good ability for your mobility. 
because you can just keep using it over and over again. It actually has no cooldown, although when it's on cooldown or off cooldown, it has a longer range. As you can see, when it goes off in one second, it has way longer range. But you can basically use that to gather up mobs. It's pretty good because you can just forwards F, forwards F, forwards F, forwards F, and get all the mobs that you need. But again, not super priority, just really, really nice for mobility. Um, you can use it quicker if you get the ultimate. And then it does have a prime version, which gives you like a ton of debuffs and stuff. But again, I don't really use this ability that often. So, uh, not super important. Crescent Barrage. This is a very important ability if you are dying a lot or losing a lot of health and a very not important ability if you aren't. It does do pretty good damage. 1400% times three, three, four, and six gives you accuracy, floating, bound, super armor, down attack, air attack. It has a ton of crap on it. But the most important part of it is that it gives you 60 health back on every hit. As you can see here, guys, it gives you a t it does a ton of hits, and each one of those hits is going to give you 60 HP. I can't show you how much that regens um, because I don't have any health lost, but it does give you a whole bunch. This you can kind of just throw in if you need health back. Like I said, it's not super priority for a lot of people. I like it um, because I like to go to areas way before I'm supposed to. Uh, so I busted out, but you don't always have to bring this out. If you're looking for points that you really need to max out some of the more important skills, I would recommend you take some points out of Crescent Barrage. I just personally really like it. Next up, Soul Ascent. Get this to level four. I don't bother learning the absolute because I never use it, but I need it for a Rabam. Last but not least on this part, Blooming Nether Flower. Okay. Blooming Nether Flower is one of your highest damage abilities. It is absolutely insane. Okay. 1124 times 1, 31 hits, okay? Knockdown, super armor, down attack, 10 HP per hit, down attack damage plus 3% from our add-ons. Guys, this gives 10 HP per hit and it hits 31 times. That is 300 HP back per monster. Per monster, you get 300 health back while using this, okay? On top of that, insane damage. What we'll do is we'll get this guy down. I don't remember actually how to knock him down right off the bat. Look at this damage. Look at that. Insane damage. I didn't say down attack on him, but I promise you it does indeed do down attack damage. It does pretty ridiculous down attack damage. And this is a really fast skill. It also moves you out of mobs. I was mentioning that when we were uh, going through the uh, skill add on menu. So let's say that I'm like fighting a whole bunch of mobs. Like this guy is like beating me up or something. We got a whole bunch of them. You can press it and you it will literally just bring you out of the mobs it super armors you right through them and no clips you right through them i can't stress enough guys this ability does absolutely insane damage so make sure you max that out asap wind orchid i never use this i mean it might be good sometime i don't know i never use it i don't like it uh but flow sacred dance you need to get this to three because this bad boy is another one of those skills for your bomb that you're gonna want uh your prime abilities that you steal from your awakening obviously your buff Super nice. 20% attack speed, 30% move speed, 30 all resist, super armor, overall super nice. Now, Phantom Dance won't consume stamina when you are using this. Phantom Dance is your sideways shift. You steal this from your awakening. You are iframed when you are in movement if you do not have it on cooldown. When you are on cooldown, it is just basic super armor and it also has no collision. As you can see, you can go through the mobs no problem. It is a very, very good skill. And like I said, when you use the uh, this one here, I never remember what it's actually called. Crescent Charm, when you activate that, it will actually allow you to go right through and never run out of stamina. Honestly, the other ability, the Blooming Heart um, or Bleeding Hearts, I very rarely ever use this. Um, I'm sure it'll come in handy in different grind spots, but at star's end, I really don't have an issue like by not using this. Um, it seems to have a pretty good crit rate. It pulls the targets towards you. It has knockback bound. It might be more useful in PVP. I don't know. I just know that I don't use it. Um, it's also a big 30 skill point dip. If you have a ton of skill points, you're looking for something to max out, maybe put it in there. Like I said, personal preference. I'm really not a big fan of it. Um, stately dignity back into our secondary skills. Stately Dignity is a very interesting skill. Uh, it gives you super armor when you press it. Uh, the more you level it up, the more range it has, and it gives you WP recovery. But the most important part of it is actually when you press it, see how it hits them, but it doesn't do damage? That is actually a mob aggro. Uh, and after you use it, you can sprint for 15 seconds and you will not run out of stamina. 
as you can see we can just kind of run around here but yeah it's actually really really good for gathering up mobs the range is pretty big you can come to pretty much like over here and just immediately like hit the mobs and it will pull them all towards you uh try not to use this at world bosses apparently it will actually draw the aggro of world bosses and i know people who've been run down by zarka using it uh but yeah you can definitely grab that that's really really good for uh aggroing mobs realistically you don't have to max it out right off the bat i like it because i use it to gather mobs at stars and pull them to the crystals but if you're grinding an area where you're just flying through killing people it might not be as important to you but try and get it when you can uh primrose spirit this is a big evasion move this is your backward shift after you use this you will get a nine percent evasion rate which i believe goes up to a pretty decent level uh 12 evasion rate uh which is why lawn does really really well with evasion uh, so you want to get that if you're, especially if you're doing PVP or if you're in really higher end grind spots and you're running evasion gear, 12% increase to evasion is super good guys. So it'll be really, really good defensively. Uh, but I usually just rely on my life steal from frenzy drafts and blooming nether flower in order to survive. So I don't use it super often, but once I get to higher end stuff past stars end, like if I go to Sakraya or any of the Elvia zones, I'll probably end up grabbing this when I get my evasion gear. Nimbus Stride. This is how you fly. This is Lon's like big, super famous skill. You can fly around the map. It gives you move speed, super armor. Um, and once you use it, you have 10 seconds of immunity to fall damage. So you can jump off a cliff as much as you like and not worry about dying. The flow lets you do it a second time. That's pretty much it. You get to get halfway to the end of this and jump again. It's really nice for getting some extra range. You can use it in your awakening. You can use it in your not awakening. It's really, really good. Nimbus Dismount, you can actually jump out of your uh, Nimbus Stride with shift and left or right, and that will give you 6% evasion for 10 seconds. Um, I never do that because I always use Fragment Stigmata. I don't really fly at people that often. So like I said, if I was going into PvP, it might be nice in like large scale to use your Nimbus Stride in, use the Nimbus Dismount, and then use Primrose Spirit. So you just get a juicy like 20, is that 20%? 6% plus 12%. So 18% uh, evasion buff. That's pretty damn good. Um, I never use either of these ones. Like I said, it's another thing that you use to get out, but I'm either using Fragment or if I would PvP, I would use Nimbus. I'm not going to bother using Morning Dew or any of these. Uh, this one's a stun. It's basically what CC do you want? You have a stun. If you want to come out with a stun, you can come out with a stiffness. You can come out with a bound or you can come out with evasion. I always, again, use the bound because I'm mainly a PvE kind of guy. But if you're PvPing, obviously these would be preference. Uh, and Pendulum Kick. This is one I was talking about. I'm actually going to take a point out of this here just to show you the prime crescent kick. Crescent kick? No, pendulum kick. That's what I was looking for. The range on this is actually pretty insane. You can kick people from really far away. It's also a knockdown. Uh, if you were into PvP at all, I'm sure that would come in handy. But as you can see, the range is actually pretty significant. It's basically when you're targeting can actually lock onto them. You can kick them. And that's going to put the bleed on mobs to pull. That's what I use this skill for. I'll be running around, you know, I'll run up to a group of mobs, hit them with it, run over. They're going to start following me. You know, there's another mob over here. You hit them, you hit with the crescent kick, and then all of a sudden you got a million people around you. That's how you aggro them. So, oh, and then you have your passives, but obviously max out the passives when you can. 5% increased evasion rate all across worldwide. This is fantastic. Again, you're going to be running evasion when you're playing lawn. Uh, you get a free 150 HP just for playing Succession. Uh, you get a bunch of HP and AP, movement speed and attack speed. And then, of course, everybody has infinite mastery and skilled hunter. Um, as for your Z buff, I always use the AP and casting speed. AP and critical hit rate. You don't really need the crit rate. You hit a lot of crit anyway. So I always end up using this. And, of course, the most important part of playing Black Desert. Always make sure you lock your evasion. I don't even know where it is in here. I think it's near the bottom. Uh, yeah, always lock your evasion because it could mess you up. So, with that out of the way, let's get into the DPS rotation. So, oh wait, Rebams, Rebams, okay. So, I have the Phoenix Furious Chase, Phoenix Chase. This is an ability where you can point it and it is another mobility skill. Simply tap it, it dashes you forwards and does a slash. It's super nice, gives you 15 magic DP, gives you WP back and it stuns. Uh, probably a bit more useful for the stun in PvP, but as for just moving around the map, again, if you try and get to another pack and you, for some reason, don't have enough mobility skills, that's your bad boy right there. Phoenix Chase will get you in. Now, for your second one, 
You can use Cymbidium Trail or White Heron. However, I much prefer Sacred Dance of Souls. Uh, main reason why? White Heron is a 15 DP debuff and a bound. Sacred Dance of Skills is a 20 DP debuff and it gives you a pull and super armor. However, White Heron, you have to do, I can actually show it to you. White Heron here, you have to do the entire animation. You have to go through that whole thing before you can start attacking. Whereas Sacred Dance, you can cancel it right after that initial pull. So for example, I could just use the initial pull, dash sideways, into this bad boy Salpuri purge. So you get all these DP debuffs and you basically, I don't know which ones are stacking and which ones aren't, but essentially you always get the maximum DP debuff on them. Uh, so that is the way that I tend to do it. Like I said, Sacred Dance of Souls is just White Heron with the ability to actually dodge out of it early. So it's just the better version. So what do I do to pull mobs? Well, like I said earlier, you can use all sorts of abilities to pull your forwards F, your base F and your Q are your main aggro pulling abilities. Then I wait for the mobs to gather up. If I'm at star's end, I'm waiting for them around the crystal. While I'm waiting for them, A and D left mouse button. This is giving you that juicy 15% attack speed, okay? Another thing you can do if you don't wanna do it that way is what I can do is I'll gather up all the mobs. I will do my double DP debuff combo voice of or voice of sacred dance of souls into salpuri okay once i have them both debuffed i'm trying to move around them to get behind for the back attack damage from my right mouse button so what i'll do is i will do the dp debuff i'll wait for it to come out dp debuff and then while i'm moving around them i'm hitting them with this i get behind and right before right before you do your damage don't forget your back or your left and right with right mouse button for that juicy 8 AP. So, overall, what you've learned so far, DP debuff combo, attack speed into AP. That gives you all the debuffs you need and they are double debuffed over here. Now, how do you start DPSing? Well, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. You're gonna watch the whole thing. And I'm gonna tell you how disgustingly easy it is. All right, are you ready? Yeah, that's literally it, guys. I am not kidding you. It is three abilities. Right mouse button. RMB, LMB. Backwards F. Okay, say it with me again. RMB. RMB, LMB. Backwards F. On repeat, okay? You can cycle that forever. If you're needing to gain WP, your attack speed buff gives you WP back. Your sideways RMB gives you WP back. So gather up the mobs and go for it. So what is our full DPS rotation? Of course, we are going to use Sacred Dance of Souls, Cancel, Salpuri, A and D left mouse button, A and D right mouse button, and then immediately RMB, RMB, LMB, backwards F over and over and over and over and over that's literally it guys i am not kidding as soon as we leave here i'm going to show you guys some stars and footage and you are going to see me using this exact combination for damaging stars and mobs i'm pulling about 4k trash an hour at 257 i did have a black star before so i was getting a little bit more earlier but i'm actually swapping over to awakening long story um but yeah, you can literally grind stars end with that. This class is absolutely disgusting. Same combo at Aukman. Same combo at Sakraya. Same combo at Blood Wolves. Same combo literally everywhere. The only thing is, if you get to a lower AP spot, like if you're going to uh, Blood Wolves, maybe even Mansions, um, you might not even have to worry about doing the initial DP debuff combo because you're just going to basically run up to them and just immediately start DPSing. Because like I said, this skill combo is kind of ridiculous. The amount of damage it does is literally insane, guys. I'm not kidding you. And I'm, I'm not messing with you. This is literally how easy this class is. RMB, say it with me one more time. RMB, LMB. 
backwards F on repeat forever and it makes it a, a super chill grind it looks amazing it looks like you're putting in tons of work and doing insane combos but really guys just between you and me it's basically playing guardian but with a cooler weapon that's literally it guys um yeah let's get into the grinding footage 